Intro, take six. <laughs> Howdy, tours. Welcome back to the Zach Life. Somehow or another, I keep getting tongue tied trying to start to do this stupid intro. So, in this video, I'm going to get the shower put in, the black tank, uh, the commode, the hot water heater, and then and then all the plumbing, all the hard lines hooked up, and uh, and try to get pressurized water in here. Uh, you know, just roughed in. That's all we're doing. It's plumbing rough in, I guess. So I'd like to talk briefly about my instant or, or my hot water heaters. So I've got a 13 kilowatt instant electric hot water heater, and I've got a six gallon. It's either six or eight gallon. I've already bought it. Regular tank style electric water heater. You know, like a little bitty one you just put under a cabinet. Uh, I'm using both of these for a couple of reasons. And, uh, and I'd like to kind of hit on that right now, and then we'll sort of go over it more when we, when we install it, or I'll voice it over. But anyway, 13 kilowatt instant electric hot water heater, and it's powered through a cord that comes out in the, in the little bay that you roll the, the power cord for the motorhome up in. I don't know what you call it, in a little door on the outside. And it's got a plug in there, you can plug it in to a plug that's powered by the generator, or if you get to a spot which would probably not be in an RV part, but it would be like in a place I would design for this thing. If it's got two 50 amp plugs, you can plug the instant hot water heater in, you know, via that extra cord. Now, it's probably not something I'll use often, but if you've got a bunch of buddies that all want to go to a mud bog or, you know, whatever, in a place, you know, where you've got a, several friends, you're spending the night, they may be tent camping or whatever, but they want to be able to take a shower, well, you can crank the generator up and run it, and have unlimited hot water. Typically, I don't think you'd need it, but if you need it, it would be there and be there instantly. Uh, typically, we'll just use the six or eight gallon regular water heater, and that should be plenty to take a shower with. Now, I want to plumb these in that the cold water comes in to the instant water heater, out of the instant water heater into the tanked water heater. And the reason for this is, is if you're using the instant water heater, and you've got several people take showers, when you get done and turn off the instant water heater, the tank water heater will still be full of hot water. Does that make sense? If it was hooked up the other direction, you know, it would have cold water in the, in the tank heater. Also, I'm going to run, it's, I've already run it, you saw it in the previous video, but we're going to hook it up, but I'm going to explain it, this one. A third PEX line, took me a second, up towards the front, up under the front sink somehow, I don't know exactly how I want to control it. But it's going to be a hot water return from the hot water under the sink back to the tank. And I'll be able to use the pump that is used to pump the fresh water out of the tank to pump water through the instant hot water heater, through the tank hot water heater up there, back to the pump and recirculate it. So if you get somewhere, or, or if you've not had any power, and you pull up somewhere and, and your water heater is cold, you'll be able to start the generator, take it to gen mode, circulate water with the pump through the tanked hot water heater and through the instant water heater and have the instant water heater hook, heat the tanked water heater within a couple minutes. I did the calculation, I've forgotten what it was. It only takes a couple minutes to have, have fully hot water. So uh, I fixed to put the black tank in uh, let's spin you around and get after it. So this is the, the actual sewer tank, the black tank that's going in this thing. It's got an S-bend in it. And the valve handle points straight down and then this will go down inside this cavity right here. And you'll be able to reach this valve from the outside by sticking your hand up through the little port that's in the side to where you would open these valves. So I've got this little hose adapter. This is the uh, the deal that you attach the sewer hose to, glued on here. This will go, this will snake into here. 
to go down through a hole you can see it comes out something like that with a little rubber adapter will go in there right where my pinky is pointing to connect these two and then there'll be a piece of three inch pipe that goes up to the 90 that's on the septic tank and this 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 tank is roughly right here and the valve is hanging down so you just reach your hand up right there and grab it a little flexible hose in there you know can let it move if, if this tank this tank possibly can move back and forth about a half an inch it's not ultra tight I mean it's like I had to jump on it to get it in but it, it's possible it could move anyway that'll keep it from breaking something I'm gonna apologize in advance here. This uh, room is just so small, there's no way to get a decent vantage point with a camera. This is just the best I could do. The two befores here are not only the outside wall of the shower, but the cavity between the shower and the outside wall of the bathroom is actually where the control panel will be. And the weight of this control panel will be mounted to the two befores and that's why these uh, this small wall here is kind of overdone and then it's bolted to the floor and the ceiling. Here I got the uh, level meter for the black tank installed. It's a graduated magnetic float switch and uh, it's just like the one in my hands here. I just wanted to make a point that it is installed. I didn't have a camera rolling. So I've got a couple of these three-quarter inch bulkheads and I'm going to drill a hole. I've already got one hole here. Uh, the top one's going to be for the vent. I'll show you in a minute. It makes a lap and goes up here and about this back wall. The other one is going to have, there's, this is going to be under the cabinet. So you open the drawer of this cabinet and you'll be able to see this. And it's going to have a valve right here. 
or like that actually. And you can open this valve. And I'm gonna put this lower bulkhead in the bottom. I'm gonna put this lower bulkhead in the bottom, screw a plug in the end of it and drill a hole to work like a jet. So if you've got a bunch of crap literal builds up in this tank, you could open this valve and have a, a, a spray to spray and circulate and turn it up and clean it out. Something just like that. It's got a little quarter inch hole in the end of it. So I've got to screw this piece back down, threaded this in, and put three screws in the toilet flange and popped it in. Now, I may have a hardwood floor that goes over this, probably what's gonna happen. The tank will flex up and down enough that I'll be able just to unscrew this and slide the hardwood floor under it, and then there's enough room here. We can deal with all that later. These toilets don't use a wax ring, it's got a a big rubber seal. This toilet is really tall. I can barely put my feet on the floor if I'm sitting here. I think I'm going to build a little step so that when you're taking a dump, you can put your feet sort of on the step. Uh, you know, I knew how tall it would be. I took a tape measure, you know, held it up, designed it, figured all this stuff out, you know, hold the tape measure in my rear, thinking oh, I could sit on something that tall. And uh, it's just a little bit more uncomfortable than I thought it would be. It was a compromise I made on purpose. And, and, the, and the reason for all this is, is a whole black tank is is above the floor the whole thing is inside the coach so it can't freeze and and also you know i think one of the problems with the you know with the smell is the fact if you're you know in south arizona in the summer and it's 115 degrees you know if you've got crap sloshing around in a tank at 115 degrees it's going to smell a lot stronger than than you know if it's 70. i guess i'm going to close this video out sitting on a toilet I kind of got done what I wanted to do. I don't scratch that. I want to finish the water. I don't like much to do it. And let's flush the toilet. We'll close the video up by flushing the toilet. How about that? So I don't think I hit the record button on my camera. For whatever reason, I didn't end up with a video. But what I have just previously done is hooked these three valves you can see here up and ran this blue line that goes toward the left. It turns just off camera and goes under the bed there and up to the city water connection that is in the black door that we installed at the first of this video. Now this area here where I'm squatting will actually be under the bed and this is where the fresh water tank will be. Uh, you can see here I'm hooking up the instant electric hot water heater and it plums into the tank hot water heater. Now there's about a week went by here between the, the previous clip you just saw and, and this clip and I've actually brought the water hose just through the door inside here and hooked it up both to the hot water heater and to the cold water side to pressure test uh, to make sure I don't have any leaks basically before this point. I'm done with this for now. I'm fixing to go jump back to the 
older video of the generator. We're going to finish hooking this up and sort of put a load on the generator. But I want to go over quickly how this is laid out and what's not done yet. Uh, so we've got, you know, this is obviously the water coming in. I got a main shutoff valve where you can shut the water off. This is going to go to the pump. The pump is going to sit right down here. It's going to be like a typical RV pump, but it's going to be 120 volts. This is going to have, this will be cut, and this is going to have several T's and 90's in it so that you'll be able to suck through this line through the pump and you'll also be able to have the output of the pump go back to the tank. So if you've got like a water tote you'll actually be able to use the pump to fill the water tank that's going to be right here from the water tote if that makes sense. And I don't know, I hadn't really thought about how this is going to lay out but it's just going to have several valves going to the, to the tank and, and etc. Uh, this is the hot water shutoff. The, the cold water goes to the instant water heater, out of the instant water heater into the cold side of the tank heater, and out of the tank heater to the rest of the coach. This valve here is going to have a regulator mounted right here. I might just put a gauge. I hadn't decided exactly, but regardless, it's going to make a loop and go back through this wall, or through probably through that hole down there actually, into the air tank of the generator. So when you go to winterize this, you'll be able just to crank the generator up, build up air pressure, open that valve, and blow everything dry. Now here is a set of T's. Uh, the, the line's going this way. Go up to, the, uh, to the, where the sink will be in the front, and the two going this way. You go underneath this cabinet, and you watch this do all that. So under the, the, the kitchen sink here in this area, this is the return line that comes out. You can sit in the floor back there, and this will be the return path for the hot water when you want to circulate and, and quickly heat the tanked water. So coming up from the floor here is the hot and cold. It's, it's coming from the T back there we talked about. Uh, this will be the pressure side of the return heater line, and then these T's come over here. This is hot and cold. For the sink and they are teed off and they go through this wall and that is the the ones that go up and feed the shower right behind there now by doing this this is kind of a mess here but i don't have any connections in this pex pipe that i can't get to after this thing's completely finished so i got those will be under the cabinet there'll actually be a cabinet door right here it's kind of hard to explain and visualize you'll be able to open that to get underneath there if you need to service It'll be hard to do anything really, but you can get up underneath there to the uh, to the gray tank and stuff like that. Works great. I was a little bit concerned about my one inch drain draining, but it seems to uh, seems to work great. Let's let it get behind a little bit here. You know, it's not ultra fast, but. Uh, it, it will catch up and stay significantly faster than the uh, shower, which is just what, just enough. I got the water hooked up to the toilet. The toilet works great. Well, I nearly ended it sitting on the toilet a while ago, so we're just doing it again. <laughs> we appreciate you watching. Please like, share, give it a thumbs up. Leave us a comment if you got a good suggestion or something you don't like, and we will catch you on the next one.